Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to Voices from the Mausoleum, and welcome to another episode of Found Footage Fridays with my co-host, Tom Reimer. Happy to be here to talk about a super scary found footage movie that is long overdue on this show. Long overdue. We talk probably of all the found footage movies we reference when we are talking found footage, aside from Blair Witch, this is one of the ones that we talk about the most, I think. And it's widely available. You can watch it pretty much anywhere. I will say that this one, people know about, if, you, if you're if you a found footage person, you know about this movie. This one's not a mystery, I don't think. Um, I've seen people say this is their favorite found footage movie. And mm -hmm. I, it's definitely, for me, it's definitely top five. You know, yeah, it's in it's in my top ten, but I do think it's the scariest to me. This one was the one of all the found footage movies I've ingested. This is the one that that scared me. It's the scariest, yeah, yeah. It's Lights super, on, super watching scary. it with somebody else, and I'm still scared. Like you know, super, super scary. Yeah, so what super, is it? Yeah. So we today we are talking the 2018 found footage horror movie, Ganjian Haunted Asylum. Bam, finally. Yeah. Um, I'll just read a short synopsis here. The Damn. crew of a horror horror web series travels to an abandoned asylum for a live broadcast. It soon encounters much more than expected as it moves deeper inside the nightmarish old building. Mm. Great setup. I think it's yeah. Like, yeah, I mean like it, yeah. It's like it, it's like uh I think they do, even in the trailer, they do a good job setting this up as if it's like a legitimate, like almost like a Blair Witch, like this is a real thing, like this is a real haunted location. Like they list a lot of real haunted places, I think, in the trailer, and then, and now, finally, Ganjam. And um, in, in the movie, like, so it's a, is it a bunch of a bloggers, YouTubers, content yeah, creators? So I think it's like the one main host and yeah. then who's yeah. like the face. And then he's got like some people who work for his channel. I think there's two or three of them. I can't remember how many. Mm -hmm. And then there's like guest people who do other things okay. um, that are not necessarily like, it's kind of like having like special guests on voices where it's like, these people are part of other channels or they do other things, but they're special guests and they come and work with this team to do this asylum. Got it. Got it. Yeah. And it's my, I mean, my favorite. I, I mean, it doesn't matter for to me if it's a found footage movie, if it's a just regular horror movie, if it's a book. Um, yeah. If you're telling me people are going to go in, somewhere they shouldn't into a haunted location that we all know will end poorly for them, that's my setup. That's my story. I want to watch it. I want to read it. Uh, and so this. I mean, this one wins me over immediately, just like, you know, Grave Encounters and yeah. and, and some of those. Like, I just. Which is a great comparison to this yeah. because it's very yeah. similar. I think that, and I this is taboo to say, but everybody knows I love Grave Encounters. It came first. It has, I have a lot of love and respect for that film. But I do think this takes that that setup of like being a real show and making it makes it a little bit better because I felt like. Grave Encounters was a little bit fun with it, like more light, I guess. Absolutely. I, I totally, I mean, yeah. yeah. Grave Encounters is lighter, funnier. I mean, it's scary. This is, yeah. this, this is feels more light. intense. <laughs> yes. Oh yeah, this is, this is, this is scary. You're, you're gonna, this one, as Angel said, oh, will make you turn on the lights if you, if you start with them up. I it's think. so good. And the, and the timing and the events of like, you know, cause that's like horror is very similar to comedy. It's all about the timing and how long you prolong moments, how long you build tension. And I, I just can't think of another film off the top of my head that nails it the way this one does, because it's, it's so on point. It stretches it out just enough to get to you. And it, it's just, yeah, it's so good in that regard. The, the, the Im everything's great about this. The, the imagery, <laughs> the, the look of it, the sound of it. Um, I feel like I like a lot of the camera angles they use. Yeah. I feel like if I'm remembering, they use a lot of the, is it GoPro like, or whatever it is. I don't know. It's like the, the camera that's like hovering right in front of their face. Uh, yeah. They're like, yeah, they have like the whole thing, the whole shebang. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. That's kind of really cool and unique. I don't think that we've seen that in a lot of found footage films. Um, 
And so as a result, you see a lot of like close up facial expressions. The actors are great in that way. Um, you see their terror up close, um, which is which is awesome as far as the movie is concerned. Yeah, one of the scariest moments in the movie is is, is that way. Like it's it's crazy. And it's um yeah, I, I love I love this movie. I I will tell you, I don't know if you know this, we might have talked about this on the found footage live. I can't remember, but so with Ganjam, one of the things that um is so cool about it is they tried to record in the real asylum and they weren't able to because the person who owns the building was trying to sell it and didn't want, you know, superstition and, you know, and didn't want anybody involved. And so they didn't want to risk being able to sell it. Are you talking about the actual filmmakers? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So they, Correct. what they did. To, yeah. So what they did to make the film look as real as it did, they actually filmed in a school but used professional blueprints to map out hallways that match the hallways in the asylum. Mm -hmm. And it got so much publicity before the film was released that the owner of the asylum took them to court and tried to prevent this film from being released. Even though it wasn't filmed at the same place. Yep. So it, he it, was so worried it was going to impact his ability to sell the building. It is the idea that the, that original asylum is a haunted and legitimately haunted place. I think yeah. so. I think it's, I think it's got some, yeah, there's probably some stuff there, but it's yeah. cool. Cause I mean, essentially they, they, they didn't do anything wrong though. Um, Cause they, they didn't film there. They just used blueprints. Like, I don't think there's, so basically whoever was looking over the case was like, no, like, sorry, they get to make their movie. And they were actually obviously able to release it, but it's just kind yeah. of neat because when you're looking at these shots, there's no way you'd think that was redone from a school. No way. No way. No it way. But and so, so anyway, so I it had sort to share of makes that. the setup. It, it sort of makes the setup uh, even better because I feel like they're sneaking into this place, right? They are like, in the movie, so yep. that's sort of like based on reality, right? They're doing something yep. they're not supposed to be doing. Yep. Um, yeah, it's a cla it, it, It's classic. It's like you're you you you're watching this, thinking like, what? Why would you do this? Would I ever do this? If I was in this situation, would I go into this place? Um, and spend the night or whatever it is they're gonna do. Um, and it's, yeah, it's pretty glorious. This movie is pretty awesome. Yeah. Terrifying. Yeah, no, it's really good. Um, so what do we, uh, what's your ratings? What do you Rated. rate this one? I, every time we do this, I feel like I need to like go back and check and see how I rated some other movies. Cause I don't, um, I, I gotta rate this though, my feeling in the moment and yep. This movie is a nine and a half for me out of 10 tapes. You cannot, I don't know that I've ever rated it anything a 10. I don't think. I think I'm the only one other than Blair Witch. That maybe Blair, know. maybe Blair Witch. But I rated Blair Witch an 11. So I'm going to say this is a nine and a half tapes out of 10. Solid. It is uh, it legitimately one of the greatest found footage movies ever made. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that's actually my rating too. Nine and a half. Wow. Okay. Half. This, will, this will be one of our highest rated films. Then. Yeah. Especially that we've had in common. Yeah. Nine and a half. I mean, I just don't think there's very little that I would change. Um, and I think, you know, the only reason I can think of it not being a 10 for me is just a couple of nitpicky things about the pace in the beginning, but I mean, otherwise it's, it's almost a perfect found footage movie. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. So I, I may ha might need you to lead when we get into spoilers and we start yeah. going through the plot of this. I got it. Um, yeah. That's yeah. Fine. So, yeah, so we're going to go into spoilers. If you spoilers. are new to found the found footage world and you've not seen Gondium, uh, there's no excuse. It's free on a bunch of things. I think it's on like Plex and Tubi and YouTube. I mean, you can watch it anywhere right now. Yep. Um, highly recommend um, if you have not seen it. Um, yeah. So spoilers. So, I mean, you know, the first little bit of this is, is, is very, um, very similar to a lot of other things We're we're just kind of meeting everybody, getting a handle on things. So our story starts with, this influencer um, who goes missing, he and uh, this friend go into the asylum. They're trying to break into this infamous room that there's all this mystery and right. legend around. 
um, and they go missing. And so the guy um, that kind of runs the horror channel, he's like, you know, he's like, we're going to go here. And he's, that's how it starts. It starts with his introduction of like, we're going to this place. We're going to have X, Y, and Z as our team. And like, this is what we're going to do. Um, and just kind of setting the stage of like, you know, they're not supposed to go into the asylum, but they're going to go anyway. They're going to live broadcast all of it with very minimal. Yep. yep. Your guest has, is on Android, which has a bug that, that Google is working to fix. Hmm. We also, huh. We also, we what? Also, it just says we also let the other person know that. Weird. Okay. I don't know when I first, when I first, Oh, now I'm hearing my voice. Yeah, when okay. I when I first logged in, it said something like that almost exactly verbatim what you said. Um and that good or it sounded like it was just a geek glitch with Google and Androids or something like that. So I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, my hand my hands were completely off the keyboard that time. Sounds okay, um, right? Yeah. Okay. Um so, um, yeah, it's just the setup of like, they're not supposed to go in there, but they're going to go in there anyway. So it's getting the team together and we, they start out there, um, meeting everybody over food. So they go and eat and we get these, this like really short kind of cute moments of them just having fun, playing games, throwing food into each other's mouths, being kind of silly and, and getting just an idea of who they are and what they're thinking going into something like this. Mm -hmm. um, and some of that's pretty typical, I would say, as far as like the characters, you've got the people who are like over the top excited about it, not scared at all, just ready to go do it. You've got the people that are going, but aren't really sure they really want to go. Um, you know, yep. a lot of that kind of normal stuff there. Yep. Um, and I mean, yeah, they show they, they break it, but then they show them breaking like into the fence and, um yeah they, there's like a setup outside so there's a team set, setting up outside um and then they yeah they go in um and it's like creepy immediately this i don't 100%. know 100 percent yeah um yeah they're exploring all the rooms they're making their way towards the trying to find the room that they're they're specifically looking for mm -hmm. and yeah stuff starts happening yeah, and they give us like a little bit of story, but I think, I don't think that the story of the asylum is actually a super big strength for the film because it's pretty normal as far as like, yeah, there oh, was yeah. some doctors, they were crazy, they did bad things, now it's haunted. You know what I mean? I didn't feel like there was a ton of it that really added, to, but I don't think the story is what makes this so good. I think what makes it so good is the events and the acting and the, the, visual. and yeah, the, the visuals. Yeah, the visuals, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, you know, they, they show us, we get the same thing. We see them putting up all these cameras. You've got the two guys that work with the main host and they are the ones who are kind of leading a lot of it, pay, paying attention to equipment and, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, but what really starts to kind of kick things off where we kind of have this interesting turn of storyline is they set up these candles and they do this like incantation and they like, do this ritual and the bell there's these all these bells on the ceiling and the bells start moving and they're like oh my god oh my god and then things actually do um kind of seem to happen but then when all of the guests leave that space we learn as the viewers that it was all staged by the people who work for yep the guy that's hosting the show and he's paying them to fake things for the sake of views and follows and whatever. He's just asking for trouble. He is, 100%. Um, and so, you know, but after that, a bunch of things start to happen. Um, and it starts out, you know, small things. Um, they do the ponytail thing, right? And this one too, yep. just like in oh, Ghost Adventures. Yes, yes. That's a, I mean, Ghost Adventures, oh my God. The, the Grave Encounters. Grave Encounters does it. Yeah, the ponytail flies Adventures. up, something pulled the ponytail. Yep. Yeah. She screams, yes. Yeah, we get that cool scene in the locker where you're just waiting, waiting, waiting. Nothing happens, nothing happens. And all of a sudden, something happens. But then yep. it's like fake. Well, it was fake the first time. But then one of the girls that's a guest puts her arm, her arm gets pulled in oh, and she oh actually gets yeah. really badly wounded. Yep. Yep. Um, 
you know, and there's just things just start to go awry. So we're starting in a lot of the cameras are like motion detect or motion detecting. So like, you know, we get some scenes of some shadow movement and, and these just really nice little light, scary things in between all these things that get really intense because as these events are occurring and that, you know, we get this really good shot of like the guy out in the tent where all the lights go off. Yep. Which was terrifying because I just kept really waiting scary, yeah. for something to like pop up. And then, um, you know, the girls, uh, two, I think it's two of the girls get separated. They're outside and they have this like landmark that they're following, but they keep coming to it. They can't get away from the asylum. They can't get to. Which is another sort of trope too. Like the, yeah, is it, is it grave encounters where they can't escape? Where they're just like they walk in circles yep. and they never get to the exit. Like it was the same idea. Yeah. 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 They finally and in grave encounters, they open the door to exit and they're yeah. back in the asylum. Yeah. Yeah. So it's um, kind of this, yeah. So this is kind of like that. Um, there's other people who are kind of running around, they're hearing things. There is a set of two that nothing has happened to and doesn't happen any nothing happens to them until almost the very end of the movie. They're just bickering back and forth and they're trying yep. to figure out like where to go, what to do, because everyone else is freaking out because these things are happening. Um, and so, you know, the the guy, the host that's in the tent ends up coming up later. Oh, that's later. That's not right now. So then Look the girls later. that are out in the woods, that's one of those really crazy scenes where you can see. Oh, my the God. Front. Yes. And you, so is that the one where you can see the eyes and yes. the eyes are like all black? And she's whispering like mad fast. Yeah. It's, oh it's my. It's so freaky. <laughs> yeah, that's like the, that's the best part. It's so scary. I can't even do it. Like it's. It's so scary. Like I. <laughs> it's not words. I don't think it's worry. I think it's just whisper it, like just no. You know, like, she's saying something, but oh, I don't remember is? what it is. Oh, okay. Because the subtitles don't seem to pick it up. Yeah, I, I didn't think. Well, I thought it was just noise, but oh my uh, god! But, the, no. but yeah, is... the face, the face is like right in front of the camera. The eyes are all black. That's sort of like when I think of this movie. That's the image. A hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. If you Google this movie, that's going to be the images that come up. Is that one from that thing? Yeah. Um, which is absolutely terrifying. Um, so I just yeah, by that itself. Part, yeah. So scary. I uh, I mean, I've seen this. I think three times, three or four times, and that scene still. Every time, I'm like, oh, gotta look it's away. So scary. I know, but you, you'd have to block your ears, too. That's one of those that you can't just cover your eyes. Like, it's, yeah. The sound is just as creepy as what you're seeing on camera. Yeah, that that scene alone is one of the creepiest scenes in found footage, easily. I uh, totally agree. Um, I think it's, I'm trying to remember the order of things, because once they're separated, the timeline gets hard to remember. Um, yeah. But based, so You're remembering it better than I am. <laughs> So the other thing, um, so they, the other girl that's with her, the one who, not the one that changes, but the other one, yep. she gets like yanked up or something else happens to her, but she ends up running back to the building. Yes. And she ends up back in the building like you do. And she, um, this is another one of the scariest moments for me is when she's in this open space with just the columns. Yes. Yep. And she's by herself. Is that the room? Is that the room they're trying to get into? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So there's, so the, some of the other team is outside the door trying to open it because they have yep. found the room of legend, which is supposed to be, you know, you can't open it. It's like another world yep. in there, all these things around all this lore. And so there's people on the outside like trying to get in and she is on the other side of it. But at first you don't realize that that's what's happening. You think she's just in another part of the building, but then she's like, she's standing in the middle and there's like a body behind her. Oh my God. Yeah. And there's like the ceiling is like water or something. There's like something going on with the ceiling. There's something in the room with her. And it like, this is one of the things I was talking about when you're talking about like building up tension this is so well done. This puts you right on the edge of right before you're over it. 
and then yeah. something happens and it just scares you. I felt like this scene was another one in this movie that just did that so well. It's just masterful. Yeah, it's so, it's so creepy. Scary. It's right behind her. Like, oh, God, I could picture it right now. It's, yeah. It's scary. And, um, scary. yeah, and I mean, because so, so, now we're starting to actually lose characters. Characters are being killed off at yep. this point. Um, and so we get these shots. And after this, I mean, it's pretty crazy until it ends. Because after this is when we see the guys on the other side of the door and how they start getting drug out and they start getting yep. hurt. And then the two that were together that were bickering that nothing has happened, they hear all this noise and they're like, what is going on? They can't get in touch with anybody. So they go and investigate. And I think it's probably at that point, that's when we realized that she, the other girl was in the room that they were yes. trying to get into. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it's, uh, it's crazy. Cause then the, the other thing that happens is the host gets pulled into the building. Yep. Yes. He sees, He's what does he see? This part I can't remember. He sees. Himself? Yeah, there's some something like that. And don't we see like the fa weird face again, like inside? Behind him. That's what it is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. So he's seeing himself and then he's kind of suddenly are like in the building. Yeah. And then there's, and then the same face is behind him. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's creeped out talking about this movie. It's so creepy. And then, um, yeah, and then it's so funny because, like, meanwhile, the watches are just skyrocketing. Like, oh yeah, which is what would happen, unfortunately. Yeah, like their live like a death stream kind of thing, up. right? Yeah, their live stream is like blowing up. They're getting tons of attention. People are like in the comments. Like, is great. Like, oh, yeah. and does anybody? I forget. Does anybody get out? No, they, nobody gets out. Fools! They shouldn't have gone in there. Yeah, they only listened. I know. We wouldn't have had a scary movie, but... That's true. But yeah, this is such a scary movie. It's so good, though. Is it? Is it our only uh, South Korean horror movie? Incantation was what? Ty Taiwanese? I think so. I don't remember. We've covered Incantation hmm. and this one. We haven't covered Naroy yet. Not yet. Mm -hmm. Might be. Might be. For some reason, I thought there was another. But I, I can't remember. Be... We're getting up there in episodes. It's hard oh, to remember. We've covered. We've seen so many at this point. Yeah. Uh, but this is. I mean, this has got to be. This is. This is at the top. This is one of the very best found footage movies. If you haven't seen it and you, you're calling yourself a fan of found footage. You There's gotta get something on it. wrong. Yes. Get on it. Yeah, this is a great one. And like we said, it's free on everything. So you just go, all you gotta do is watch it, hit play, and enjoy. We each rated this nine and a half. So yeah. That is a yeah. solid rating. Um yeah, so Tom and I only have two more episodes before I think one one more episode and well wait until what? what? So we take a you're right break. yeah this is it and then we've got one that we're gonna have out uh for sometime closer to christmas but we won't have um found footage fridays in the month of december we're gonna take some time off focus on family and holiday stresses um yeah and then we'll be back with some stuff in january mm -hmm. um but we do have a christmas one we're gonna cover and then um but yeah that'll be it so this is our second to last episode for the year and we get a little bit of a break. And then a little bit of a break. Oh, and also today. Also. Available today is my debut collection. That looks so good. Um, all the little voices. Um, I have done anthologies. Uh, people who follow me know that. This is the first one that is just me. I'm so excited. How many stories yeah. are in that? It's 10 stories. Um, two are repurposed from other anthologies, but they're repurposed because I had to take a lot of stuff out and they mm -hmm. were edited out a lot of stuff that I wanted to keep. So I revisited, kind of rewrote a little bit and had them re-edited to put in this. Oh, nice. Nice. So there's two of those. Um, and then quite a few in here are my rejection babies that get ignored a lot or rejected a lot. So I'm just going to put them we in my own. <laughs> We all have projection, baby. Yeah. 
Um, and the back is really cool. It's got a blurb from Cat Valor. That's so awesome. It says, as my cat sneezes, hopefully that's not too loud. Um, it says, all the little voices is one of the most beautiful and ambitious collections I've ever read. Each story serves as a door into an entirely different world with a massive scope and utterly horrific, horrific implications. This book is a must read for those seeking more speculative horror. Yeah, so you can and get where, this today, as of today. Where can we get it? It's on Amazon. On Amazon. I did it through KDP. So it's on Amazon. It's available in um, this and ebook. It is on Kindle Unlimited as well. Um, and if you're interested, uh, if you're watching this and you're interested, I am going to have author copies I'm going to sell myself that I'm going to sell signed. Um, so if you want that, you know, kind of hold out and I'll. I'll announce. I'm going to order. I don't know how many I'm going to order yet. We'll see how interest kind of flows. But um, I'll have some of my own to sell that I'll sign and send out if anybody's interested in that. If you want to hold it. Nice. Out, so. Yeah. Uh, the cover is awesome, by the way. Who did the cover? Grim Poppy Design. Oh, yeah. I I'm have. Helpful. I'm a, a cover hoarder. I think I have like. I'm not joking. 30. You might need them at any time. There we go. Um, yeah, so she's fantastic to work with. And so this is a $20 cover. Amazing. That's it. So um, she also did the cover for the other book that I have coming out in December, but we'll hold out talking about that one until later. But this is, yeah. So this is my proof. So this comes out today. So you can go get it today. So exciting. Congratulations. Go get Thank it. You. Very excited. But uh, yeah, other than that, this is going to be uh, it for a couple weeks until closer to Christmas. Then we have one more for the year for you guys. So Can't wait for that. Yeah. So thank you so much for hanging out with us. Thanks for hanging through this year with us. Like, it's kind of crazy to think about that we're already at the end of it. But, oh, um, you know. Can't wait for 2024. I'll tell you that. Yeah. So have a happy and safe holiday coming up. And uh, Tom and I will see you in the next one. See you soon.